In this lecture, we're going to discuss how to test classes and pipes in Angular. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to unit test an instance of a class. And you're also going to know specifically how to unit test an Angular pipe. Now we're going to start our unit testing journey with all you will ever need to know. How to test a class. Now everything in Angular is an instance of a class, be it a component, a directive, a pipe, and so on. So once you know how to test a basic class, you can pretty much test everything. So let's imagine we have a simple class called auth service. This is something we want to provide to Angular's DI framework, but that doesn't play a part in how we want to test it. It has one function called is authenticated, which returns true if there is a token stored in the browser's local storage. To test this class, we create a test file called auth.service.spec.ts. And this one sits next to our auth.service.ts file. Now in the test file, we first import the auth service class that we want to run our tests against. And then we add a describe test suite function to hold all of our individual test specs. Now we want to run our test specs against a fresh instance of auth service. So we use the before each and after each functions to set up and clean instances of auth service. So before each test spec is run, we create a new instance of auth service and store it on the service variable. And then after each test spec is finished, we null out our service variable. And also we remove any tokens we stored in local storage. Now we create some test specs. The first spec I want to create should check if the is authenticated function returns true when there is a token. So I create a test spec function with the it function and I give it a descriptive name. So I'm saying it should return true from is authenticated when there is a token. So the first thing we need to do is to actually set the token in local storage, which is what I'm going to do here. So local storage dot set item token and then one, two, three, four for our test to run. The token doesn't really need to be anything. It just needs to exist. And then I'm going to write our test expectation. So I'm going to write what the actual value is going to be. So to do that, I call service is authenticated. And to complete this expectation, I need to add a matcher. Now the matcher I want to add is just the one called to be truthy, which will just check to make sure that it returns something that resolves to true. So we're expecting the result of service dot is authenticated to return something that looks like a true value. And we also want to test the reverse case. You know, when there is no token, the function should return false. So I just add another test spec. It should return false from is authenticated when there is no token. And here I'm having a similar expectation, but I'm saying it, it should be false. And in this one explicitly, I'm not actually setting anything in local storage. Now, the thing to be very clear of is, is even though I'm setting some data in local storage on line 16, before the second test spec is run, the after each function is called, and in the after each function, I'm removing the local storage. So I'm cleaning up the environment after running the first test spec before running the second test spec. So when I'm running the code here, I actually don't expect there to be anything in local storage. So now if we run this, there we go, Jasmine has run and both of these tests now pass because they're both green.
Now pipes are by far the simplest part of Angular. They can be implemented as a class with one function and therefore can be tested with just Jasmine and the knowledge we've gained so far. Now in the section on pipe, we built one called default pipe. And this pipe lets us provide default values for variables in templates. Here it is on the screen for you to remind yourself how it worked. Remember with pipes, we have a transform function and however we use this pipe in our template, all we're doing is we're passing values or arguments to this transform function and whatever this transform function returns, that is what gets returned via the pipe in the template. So given that we can test this pipe just by testing this class and this function. Now for our pipe file, we have a test file called default.pipe.spec.ts. And in here I've bootstrapped just some initial code for our tests. So we're importing the default pipe class. I then create a test suite. In our test suite, I use it before each setup function to set up a new instance of our default pipe. So for every test spec that we create, we can be running it against a new instance. Now pipe classes have one function called transform. So in order to test pipes, we just need to test this one function, passing inputs and expecting outputs. Now our first test spec checks to see that if the pipe doesn't receive an input, it returns the default output. So I create that with the if function and then I'm calling it providing no value returns fallback. I then write the test expectation. Pipe dot transform. So passing in no value. So the first parameter is what gets passed into the pipe. Now for our pipe, we also pass in a variable, a fallback image so we pass that as a second parameter it doesn't need to be a real image or even a real url for this case but i'm just going to put one in and then we add a matcher to the end i'm going to use the 2b matcher which does an equality check between what gets input here versus what gets input here so if the output of pipe.transform empty parameter and then a parameter is equal to what we pass in here, then this will be true and this ex expectation will pass. So given we expect the pipe, if we pass in no value to return the default value, which is the second parameter, I actually expect this to return true. Also in order to run our default pipe, our new test spec file, we need to add it to our array of test spec files in our index.html. default.pipe.spec and now if we run our test you can see that the pipe test is being run on the top and it's passing. Now this works for a kind of a simple pipe, a pipe which doesn't require dependencies to be injected into the constructor. If your pipe requires dependencies then it might be better to use the angular testbed which we cover later on in this section. So to summarize, we can test any isolated class that doesn't require anything else with a simple Jasmine spec file. Nothing more complex is required. And since everything in Angular is represented as classes, we, we could actually stop here. You have most of the tools already to write tests for directives, components, pipes, and so on. However, our code often requires other code in order to work. It has dependencies. So how we write isolated tests for pieces of code, which by nature are not isolated and need dependencies, is the topic of the next lecture.